Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? I want to talk to you about something that is very near and dear to my heart. When I first came on active duty, um, I didn't know the first thing about sleep medicine. I went into my commanding officer. He barely looked up over his glasses and he said, congratulations, I understand you're our expert in dental sleep medicine. And I, being a foolish young lieutenant, said, sir, I have no idea what you're talking about. And he barely gave me another glance. So they sent me back to school and that was a little bit over 15 years ago. So, and, and by the way, let me know if anyone has trouble hearing me. I have five daughters, so I, I can raise the volume as needed. So, to hit on what is sleep apnea, um, just as we were, we were told, it's a repeated episode of complete or partial airway obstruction. Essentially, the person is suffocating on and off throughout the entire night. Um, the warning signs include snoring, choking, gasping, and silent pauses during sleep. Often, the family members, the spouse, is the first one to identify that something is going on. And I should mention, humans are the only animal that does not have bony support of their airways. So this is unique, uh, unique to us. Some of the risk factors for OSA include hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, NVAs, and stroke. So in healthcare, we deal with things called barriers to diagnosis and treatment. And today, what, what can we do as you know, the average person? We can deal with raising general public awareness. Um, most people don't understand what this is, why it's important, how it impacts them. But we're going to go over how undiagnosed sleep apnea impacts healthcare costs. It's impacting your business every day in loss production, in cognitive abilities of your employees. It impacts safety every day on the road. This is a frightening fact, but every week I will have a patient that comes in to see me because they fell asleep at the wheel. And more often than not, they're on the same roads that we are. We're also going to touch on workplace safety. So when we look at that, now these numbers are based on 2015. But $150 billion was spent dealing with this problem. Workplace accidents, uh, $6.5 billion. MVAs, $26.2 billion. Lost production was the highest at $86.9 billion. Comorbid diseases, $30 billion. The numbers are staggering. Now, prevalence, it's estimated that about 12% of the population in the U.S. has sleep apnea. 80% are untreated undiagnosed. Most frequently this is seen in men over 40, but I've seen it in both genders at all ages. Now I put a little asterisk by children. The presentation today does not deal with children, but I, I have to take every opportunity that I get. I mean, Steve and I have five daughters, and uh, any time that a parent, a grandparent notices snoring in a child, on a basis, that is not normal, and that should get checked out. So that's a little take-home message. It's all that I'm really going to touch on about children for today. So diagnosis, that's the first question. People will come in and they'll say, you know, I'm, I'm coming in because my, my family members noticed. I'm always being pushed off to a room down the hallway. Um, I'm sure if there's, I've got one patient that every golf trip he goes on, he has to get the extra room. Um, and, and sometimes snoring is just snoring. Snoring is just a benign sound that soft tissue makes when air passes over it. But, and I'm sure that if we go around this room, everybody here knows somebody that snores, someone that maybe, you know, gets teased at all the family gatherings because they fall asleep after a meal and they're watching TV and they just nod off. And snoring is okay. It's annoying, but okay. It's benign. But what if it's not snoring? What if it is something much more severe? In this case, sleep apnea. Now, there's a lot of sleep disorder breathing diagnoses. And we're not going to touch on all of those. We're just going to be focusing on obstructive sleep apnea. So if you picture the human airway like a tube, a picture it like a straw, this is it just getting pinched shut. Not enough air is getting through. So how do we know? Is it snoring? Is it sleep apnea? And I like this one. I'm going to pretend it's the woman saying it, but 
It says, it's not the snoring I mind, it's the talking noise you make during the day. So, <laughs> so <laughs> um, now in dealing with diagnosis, the most important thing that you can do for your own health and the health of the people around you is to have a conversation with your physician. This is not something that anyone can tell you um, that they know if they have it or not. Every day that I work, I have someone come in and they'll put their spouse in the chair and, and I always invite family members back because that's where the real information comes out. And I'll say, okay, well, you know, tell me about your issues. Tell me what's going on. Let's see, you know, what, what the problem is. Oh, no problem. And meanwhile, like, the wife is back there going, like, fix him. <laughs> so how do we get that diagnosis? Because that's really where we get the ball rolling. Now, there's three forms of testing. The first is, and we're just going to go across here. The first is polysomnogram. Now, that is the in-lab test. This is the gold standard. And this, as you can see from, uh, from the gentleman up there, is, is quite an undertaking. But it is the gold standard for a reason. It's going to pick up on so much more than the typical um, HST, which is being seen here. And for a long time, the HST is all that we had. A home sleep apnea test involves a band that goes around the waist. There's something on your finger. There's something on your nose. But it misses a lot of cases. It doesn't pick up on a lot of the milder cases. But luckily, there's been a lot of advances. And the one that I'm most excited about is something called a watch pad. Patients love this. Now, constantly evolving. They just made new changes to it. But this, they've correlated it, and it's 90% correlation with the in-lab test. Except you're doing this at home. And patients like it. They're not tethered. There's nothing around their waist. There's nothing on their face. And so they sleep better. Now, at this point, the only uh, system that I know that has it is WellSpan. And it is a huge leap forward. So once they take the test, what happens? Well, they gather all the data. Physicians take a look at it, and they score it. And there's different scoring based on insurance. Medicare scores it a little bit more liberally um, than most of the physicians would like it to be. But uh, once you get that score, we know if you are mild, moderate, or severe. And the best form of treatment is going to be based upon your level of severity. So they also combine that with your medical history and what you can tolerate, because it could be the best form of treatment, but if the patient can't tolerate it, it's useless. So the gold standard here would be the CPAP mask, which is the continuous positive air pressure mask. There's also oral appliance therapy. That's what yours truly does. And there's surgical options. Now, there's some really exciting advances in surgery. One is called Inspire, which is also called hypoglossal nerve stimulation. We only use this for patients that are so severe, they can't be titrated with a mask, they can't be titrated with an oral appliance, and even the combination of those two things doesn't work well. So this is a, I've had patients that have um, previously had to go through um, Inspire treatment, and I had to send them out to UPMC out in Pittsburgh. But now it's also being offered in York, which is right in our backyard, and I can't tell you how excited my patients are about that. Oh, and by the way, if anyone has questions about what I'm saying while we're doing this, please just let me know. Uh, so what is oral appliance therapy? It's worn only during sleep. It's essentially, if you picture a custom mouth guard, a custom orthodontic appliance, uh, it moves the jaw into a forward position. I'm sure that you've all seen, either in movies or on TV, uh, someone is unconscious, the paramedics come in, and they're doing CPR. And they manipulate the jaw. Well, one of the reasons that they do that is that there's muscles that connect from the lower jaw to the airway. So if you move that jaw into what we call a protrusive position forward, the airway is open. And that's how these work. Yes, they're typically covered by medical insurance and by Medicare. There's 100 different appliances on the market, and not one piece of literature that says one is better than the other. So it really needs to be what works best in the patient's hands. So looking at undiagnosed sleep apnea, and when you see the abbreviation OSA, that's obstructive sleep apnea. Undiagnosed OSA and healthcare costs. Like I said, 
We're talking about $30 billion just in healthcare costs, and this was in 2015. Now, the top three culprits were mental health, depression, anxiety, followed by heart disease and diabetes. And when you look at those top three, that's over $20 billion right there. And don't worry, I do throw in good, happy news at the end, too. So the cost of obstructive sleep apnea in the undiagnosed versus diagnosed treatment cases, this is a busy slide. I don't expect you to take all of this in, but looking down, oops, sorry. Looking down here at the red arrows, what you can see is that the cost of undiagnosed obstructive sleep apnea is around $6,300 per person versus treating them, diagnosing them and treating them, which is at $2,100. Looking at the cost of undiagnosed OSA in business, which I found to be very fascinating, we're focusing on days missed, cognitive function goes down, lack of productivity, increased legal exposure and liability. So it's almost like sleep apnea untreated turns you back into a teenager because this is how our teenagers kind of act. Not productive and not showing up. <laughs> so we've got workplace accidents coming in at 6.5 billion, loss of productivity, and this was a staggering number, almost 89, 000, or 89 billion dollars just by not getting this treated. The undiagnosed obstructive sleep apnea cost, when, combined, when we look just solely at motor vehicle accidents, um, came in at 26.2 billion. And we're looking at commercial and non-commercial. And one of the takeaway things is that even if you don't have sleep apnea necessarily, the impact of being exhausted when you drive is really frightening. Missing just one to two hours of sleep doubles a driver's risk of accident. Missing two to three hours increased the risk of a crash by a staggering 400%. And I always think about our teenage and our college drivers here that are staying up all night studying and then we're sending them off to school and they're not rested enough. This is actually a very dangerous thing. They've done studies, and it's actually better for you if you had to, God forbid, ever go up against a drunk driver or a tired driver, you're actually better with the drunk driver because they will try to swerve, they may skid, they may step on the brakes. The exhausted driver will just continue driving. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to look through the news, to look through um, the media to see the impact that this is having on our society in human life, in cost to businesses, um, the Chicago train accident, the Metro North engineer, it just goes on and on. According to a study done by AAA, drowsy driving causes nearly 30% of the accidents each year. And this I found to be very interesting as well. A single beer affects someone who only slept four hours. Again, picture your, your you know, older college student, your graduate student. It affects them. One beer will affect them the same way that drinking six beers would affect a well-rested person. So obstructive sleep apnea and motor vehicle accidents. And this is where we start to get into some positive things. Commercial drivers treated, diagnosed, and properly treated with CPAP had a 73% reduction in preventable driving accidents. And this led to a cost savings for the trucking companies, as you can see here. So again, the total costs associated with obstructive sleep apnea in the United States in 2015 was 160 billion. But the annual per patient diagnosis and treatment costs are 67% less than leaving patients going undiagnosed. So it saves us all a lot of money to find these people, make them aware, get them diagnosed, and get them treated. So I always like to end on a positive note. Individuals diagnosed and treated reported a 40% decline in workplace absences. So if you want to get your people showing up for work, make sure that they're rested. This is especially true in shift workers. Um, that's the hardest group to get treated. Commercial drivers treated with CPAP had a 73% reduction in preventable driving accidents. And the last, the most important thing, 
annual per patient diagnosis and treatment costs are 67% less than leaving these patients undiagnosed. So I want to thank you very much for your attention. I hope I didn't put any of you to sleep. But. <laughs>